T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Lift off at the top of Go SpaceX, go Game Wagon 2. Vehicle pitching down range. Stage one propulsion is nominal. We've had good call outs from Mission Control that everything is looking good or nominal as you're hearing from Mission Control. And these nighttime views, of course, mean that we are about a minute, or about, I'm sorry, about 40 seconds into the launch of our bandwagon two. Power and telemetry are nominal. Confirmation there that power and telemetry are both looking good. And we are currently throttling down the rocket to prepare for max Q. The point of maximum- Supersonic. With that call out, we know that Falcon 9 is moving faster than the speed of sound. And again, max Q is our next major milestone here. Max Q. That confirmation is important because Max Q is the point of maximum aerodynamic stress on the vehicle. And with that, we now have MVAC several started. confirmation that we're beginning to chill the MVAC engine ahead of second engine start one, which is just one of several events that we have coming up in quick succession here. Our next major milestone will be main engine cutoff or MECO, where we will shut down the nine Merlin engines on board the second, I'm sorry, on board the first stage. Shortly thereafter, we'll have stage separation, where that pusher within the inner stage will be activated to separate the first and second stages from each other. Then we'll flip the first stage around so it can make its way back to Earth, which you'll hear called out as stage one flip, then second engine start one, or SES one, before the start of our boost back burn. Main engine cutoff. There's confirmation of stage separation confirmed. And stage separation. With great views on your screen right there. And back ignition. Stage back startup. And there we had confirmation that we have lit our MVAC engine on board the second stage, and you've got great views on your screen right now of the boost back burn for our first stage booster. The next milestone we're expecting to hear called out by mission control is fairing separation. During fairing separation, those two fairing halves, which again are flight proven for today's mission, are going to be jettisoned away from one another before falling back to Earth. SpaceX will attempt to recover those fairing halves again tonight. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of access to space, which is critical to enable- Fairing separation confirmed future scientific research. And with that, we do have fairing separation confirmed. Stage back shut down. And confirmation that our boost back burn has ended. Now that our boost back burn is complete, Falcon 9 has two more burns in order to land its first stage booster. Our next major milestone is the entry burn on our first stage, which is scheduled to occur at about T plus six minutes and 32 seconds. The entry burn is the first of those two burns ahead of landing, and it's effectively pumping the brakes on board the first stage. We need to slow the rocket down before it hits the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Without this burn, we'd be only using the atmospheric drag to slow down Falcon 9, which would add a lot of extra stress on the rocket. So instead, a single Merlin 1D engine relights for the entry burn. The entry burn is pretty quick, and we're expecting it to last about 20 seconds today.
while it makes its way back to Earth, Falcon 9 is using four hypersonic grid fins, which are positioned near the top of the first stage to help steer as it heads back toward landing zone four at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the 21st flight of this first stage booster, which has previously launched NROL-87, NROL-85, SARA-1, SWOT, Transporter-8, Transporter-9, NROL-146, and 13 Starlink missions. Right now, we are just about a minute away from that entry burn. And then following the entry burn, the booster will go through its final burn, the landing burn, which will slow the vehicle down for a successful land landing. Just in case you've never joined us for a land landing before, hopefully tonight you'll have a good view of our landing legs. That's what, use, what Falcon 9 uses to touch down either on the landing zone or the drone ship. Those four landing legs are made of carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb and placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket. We should see them deployed just prior to landing. Of course, if you're joining us from Vandenberg, we're hoping that you will have a great view as this booster makes its way back to Earth for the 21st time, targeting a land landing at landing zone four, which is just next to our launch pad. There's confirmation that this burn has begun. And again, we're expecting the entry burn to last just about 20 seconds. Getting some good views of those grid fins as well. And confirmation of shutdown. As always, you can continue to follow the trajectory of both stage one and stage two in the bottom corners of your screen. Some views of the California coast coming in behind those grid fins on your screen at the moment. Fun fact, today's launch is the first launch of winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, as the winter solstice was just about two hours ago at 1.21 a.m. Pacific time. Stage one, FTS is saved. Confirmation there that we're safe. And that Falcon 9 is transonic. Stage 2 terminal guidance. You'll notice Stage that. Stage 1 landing burn. Confirmation of our landing burn. Stage 2 FTS is safe. Landing leg deployed. Impact shut down. We did get great views of those landing stage legs. Stage one landing confirmed. And have confirmation of stage one landing confirmed. 